rolling. Okay, let's go. Okay, so thank you, Matt, for being here. A pleasure. With us. So, um, so as you know, my name is Fatma, and uh, we are here for a break in case of emergency. That is for independent musicians and record labels. Yes. Um, so, and uh, you're a creative artist, but you're also the founder of a record label. <laughs> That's right. And the other day we were having dinner and you were telling me that uh, when you were touring with uh, Cold Cuts in uh, Japan, yes, that's where you got inspiration for Ninja Tune. That's right. We were there with uh, Norman Cook, later became Fatboy Slim. And we were an English posse in Japan. And um, yeah. Japan... Uh, Everything's different, the food's different, the people are different, the language is different, the culture is different. A bit more further, yeah. And uh, the typography is different. So it's a big stimulation, a big change. So I think that gave us the impetus to start something new, which became Ninja Tune. We did see a TV program about ninjas with the sound turned down. And also we saw this magazine with cut out ninjas. So John and I, between us, we came up with this idea, Ninja Tune. Uh, was there a, um, a cultural value, what you felt there in Japan, that uh, was not happening in Europe? Well, really just what I was saying, that because everything, you know, if I go around Europe, people look fairly the same, the, the kind of structure of the languages is fairly the same, the food's fairly the same, the culture's fairly the same, but in Japan, it's very different even though it's quite westernized as well. So artistically speaking, creatively speaking, that was a big boost. I think that was what we got out of it. Um, what do you feel that uh, Ninja Tune today, let's say, what do you feel like uh, it's contributing to the world? What are we contributing to the world? Well, I, in, I'd say creatively and from a business point of view, we fly the independent flag, which to me means an alternative way to just the commodification of everything. Major companies, we see them as they're the enemy. We always wanted to be different to that. They just care about profit and commodity. We care about music, soul and people. So I think that's baked into, and art. You know, we're an artist that label. So that is baked into Ninja Tune because we're started by John and I because we didn't like what was happening in the music business, we wanted to try a different way. So I think we still represent that in our DNA and in the way that we operate. Um, I also like to think that, you know, everything we do, even using this plastic microphone or coming here in a car or even eating our lunch, we're using resources. There's a cost to the earth and the environment and to humanity. So as far as possible, we're trying to be, be a benefit rather than just a cost. So for example, recycling everything at Ninja Tune, trying to find new ways to make our CDs and packaging, which is not so destructive. Um, using energy, renewable energy, we put all solar panels on the roof of our building, so now we can power our whole building through our own energy. We have an air source heat pump to heat the building. Um, we plant a lot of trees. My wife is actually in charge of that side of things, deciding where we should spend our money and um, offsetting has become a horrible word you know it means like you sin and then you pay some money we want to balance things and it ideally we will be a benefit rather than a cost our actions overall should generate a benefit to the planet this only is sustainable if we just are a cost or even if we just stay level it's not good enough we need to be a benefit so we're trying to find many ways to do that and we you know we probably fail but we are trying to do it and trying to yeah grow that side of our our operation to be to be a benefit and still put out good music and run a successful business this is the challenge uh, during the workshop that you were having on saturday you were also uh, insisting on the fact that uh, being an artist is being an activist yes and uh, yeah it seems to be a very foundational uh, value i mean that's more that is something that cold cut me and jonathan of i think coming out of the quite political punk landscape and the diy landscapes another good word diy to mention in connection with being independent do it yourself 
don't rely on the Babylon system to do it you can do it yourself um, but yeah for me art and music need to have some kind of human theme to them otherwise what's the point you know an artist like Damien Hirst he's a very clever guy and his works can you know there's some beauty there but for me Banksy is more the kind of artist that I aspire to and admire his works are talking about the human condition they're commentating criticizing some of the crazy hard bad things that are going on in the world in a very humorous and artistic way for me this is what art should be about and I and I want our music to be about that as well split personality <laughs> you know the truth is that having set up ninja tune which was just john and me and a, a telephone in the old days we've got a fantastic staff headed by peter quick who came early on to run the label and he sort of took it over and then we've attracted a really good tribe of ninjas to run the label i'm not so involved in that i've concentrated i've been able to concentrate more on the creative side and and the activist side as well and, and the, and the res what I call research and development, trying to come up with new tools, instruments, audiovisual direction, sort of explore new art forms. So um, that's, it's about having good people to work with. So you can split up what you're doing. You can have people that you can rely on, that you trust, that you cooperate with, and that way you can achieve more over a, a wider, a wider spread. It's a bit like a family. Actually, my relationship with my other ninjas is quite complicated. And, you know, there are arguments and fights and different agendas that go on. Um, I feel now that, in a way, I've grown up a bit, so I'm better at avoiding those fights and taking responsibility. But it is like having children. You don't control your children. Um, and they may do things that piss you off. But hopefully, if you've started them out from a good place, then broadly you're happy with their directions and their success. And I am, I'm happy with our, our ninjas broadly. I don't agree with everything that every artist and everyone on Ninja Tune says and believes, but we are not a monoculture operation. There's, everyone has their own, um, their own beliefs, but with a certain amount of common ground, um, uh, core values, I think that's, that's all you can hope for. I th you know, I think we have, um, we've attracted artists that value some of the same things that we use to start the label. The values that we had ourselves, we've manifested them in Ninja Tune, and that's naturally attracted other people that have similar values to an extent. So that's, that's very encouraging. I mean, like the staff at Ninja Tune, there's some very switched on people there hard-working people they could probably be earning a lot more money working for a bigger company or maybe working in a bank but they're all like music heads and there's something about ninja's independent spirit i mean i staff tell me sometimes that for example it's really important to them that ninja tune does socially positive actions that we do environmentally positive actions that's one of the reasons they're there so that um i think yeah there is a coherency uh, which which makes sense to me a positive coherency about these things which are not necessarily something you would find in every record label but you know you should do right because the environment and the polit political landscape we live in is it's of a hundred interest to a hundred percent of people who breathe you know so really everyone should be no matter where you're working what company or whatever you're doing it should be a, of interest
practice it for you that maintains the spirit while while being established but like everything in life it's a balance a uh, pete has this phrase careful with the cash crazy with the music so we means we can freak out with the music and you know take some risks and do it for the music that's a bit different to what everyone else is doing but at the same time we have to have it on the foundation of a good business because otherwise we'll be out of business means we won't be able to put out those records and music anymore so that I, I was speaking to a friend of mine he was in this punk band crass they're kind of the everyone knows crass with the one punk band that never sold out they were the real thing real anarchists but he, penny rimbo was saying to me well, how did you do it because we used to lose money on every record we put out crass's records right and that's because they didn't get the balance right between making it sustainable and being political freaks that had their message out there there's got to be a balance between it otherwise you can't go on but it's you can also go too far if it just becomes just about the money yeah. then you're gonna s the music is gonna suffer something I'm learning too. well I think you know balance is at the essence of uh, human life isn't it and a balance is not a th it's not a thing it's a process like if you're standing on one leg you don't stay I, I was doing it this morning every morning I try and balance on one leg with my eyes closed very very difficult check it out but uh, y you don't stay in one place right you're constantly moving and shifting your balance to try and keep it yeah. to, to, to manage to stand on one leg it's a dynamic equilibrium so balance is not a fixed thing it's a dyna like dynamic scales, always yeah always shifting always shifting yeah and underneath you is always shifting as well so then you have to be able to adapt to that because what we're standing on is a constantly shifting landscape as well but um, maybe I can ask well there's a lot of things I want to talk to you about but, but uh, oh yeah no two, two questions mm -hmm. um, so now for a break what I'm noticing is that a lot of the musicians we're having have been working with music for a while uh, but they feel like they kind of lost some kind of spark or looking for the foundation that they started with to keep on going yeah have you ever experienced this and ha or how have you gotten uh, do you feel like you have sometimes stagnated in terms of music and life and have found your way back well that's a good way of putting it i can totally relate to that i mean you know i i, I put out my first record when i was about 21 and it it was a disaster i lost a lot of money ended up throwing away most of the records and then when we came back like eight years later and had another go with our first cold cut record we managed to get it right so uh, i could have when the first one was a failure I could have given up then and actually I didn't go into music as my career I was a computer programmer ah. um, but I always thought you could use computers for creative purposes so I was writing little games and trying to make art with a computer um, and then I went on holiday to Spain I was chasing this girl it didn't work out so it, but I experienced beach culture for the first time <laughs> And the idea, you know, I felt that you, seeing people out in the evening, having a good time. In the UK, everyone stays inside because it's too fucking cold and rainy. And then you just get used to that. And so I, I was like, right, I'm done with being a computer programmer. It was getting very hard, actually, to debug other people's code. You know, I was, yeah. So I moved to Spain to be a DJ. And um, I had a great year here uh, in Spain, a great year. But I realized if I wanted to do anything with the music I had to be back in London anyway I'm not really answering your question I don't want to go into that history but I would do want to say I do want to say that I have many times in my life and in my career felt like giving up and I I've had a sort of low grade depression for a lot of my adult life and um, it's been really a struggle to keep going and you know many times I, I've nearly given up or even thought about killing myself and um, 
and even even when we, when we've been successful there's still been times like that where it felt oh it's not fair um it's a disaster uh, i mean it's hard now to understand how i might feel at that time but this is when you're in something you you can't see outside it sometimes so i i have many times got to a very low state and and come back again and music's been one of the things that has helped me to come back um you know favorite music that i put on that makes me glad to be alive again i i think probably many people can relate to that power the power of music in that healing way um so even when one achieves a measure of success it doesn't mean that you're never going to feel the downs and feel depressed and feel like giving up for me that's been a constant cycle what i realized though a few years ago was a lot of my energy came out of negativity it came out of frustration or depression or i'll show them i'll show them that i'm the best or you know you know i want people to like me so i'll make something really cool or it's not fair i'm better than these guys and, and um and it was it it can be a useful source like anger can be a useful energy but what i realized is it's a bit like oil it's it's very powerful stuff but it's it's toxic it's dirty it's unsustainable and it's expensive it has a lot of costs to it so i think that using psychically using oil using negative emotion as a fuel source was not sustainable for me and i've tried to move into being more solar powered in my creativity now and i think i think the last few years my wife's been a big influence on me because she's a very a very happy person who enjoys life and so she's been a powerful influence on me and i think i've become more solar powered as a result and i think i'm still doing good work it doesn't have to be oil powered um so uh yeah i think you know everyone's probably got that that uh that fight going on and and a certain amount of choice as to what you're going to put your attention on are you going to put your attention on on what's bad what you know criticism of yourself or the world or blaming things or are you going to put it you know i mean i believe we're ha having environmental collapse of the planet at the moment fuck knows where we're going to but right now i'm talking to you we're here with our friends we're at, we're at peace the, the waves are still coming in like they have for millions of years it's a blue sky we're you know we're in a peaceful a country that's at peace and we're going to have some food on the table tonight i'm i appreciate that i appreciate that and if i give my attention to that i think that that feeds me as well and keeps me creative sorry a bit of a long answer but it's, it's a deep question Success to me means the ability to express myself as an artist and musician and to be able to keep doing that because I've got enough money coming in to pay my bills and not have to worry about that so I can actually concentrate on doing what is important to me. To me, that for an artist, that is enough success. I don't need to be number one or have millions of followers. I, you know, I really enjoy what I do. If I can continue doing it, that's a big part of success. But, you know, in the last few weeks, actually, my ideas about what I should be doing are changing. I, I'm getting, I've committed now to being more full on with activism and hopefully some kind of creative activism so I can use whatever I've got as an artist and musician to create some positive change in the very scary world that we're in of the rise of the world uh, you know people go on about conspiracy and bill gates and the virus and contrails and ufos it's like i'm really not interested because i'm really worried about the rise of the right-wing fascism and environmental collapse and to me these are very real and I'm, that's my negativity budget is taken up by these two things so i haven't got time for any other shit just these two things are enough to think about and success 
for me now would be knowing that I am contributing to the best of my ability to solving those problems even if it's just one grain of sand that I can contribute who knows whether it's a grain or a mountain or or whatever but I just want to know that I'm doing the best that I can to be of benefit to this crazy human race which which we're in that's it thank you thank you great to be here hi to everyone and uh, yeah it's, I've had a great time at, here at Break Festival the the Vic Art House um, it's just a unique place I don't know anywhere like that in London I haven't really experienced a place like that it's it's unique the people that I've met are just so warm and positive and all you know we're all together in a, a, a creative uh, cooperative warm space and uh, I'm really really happy to be a funky uncle of Vic and uh, break <laughs> 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 good enough <laughs>